More and more banks are going digital and closing branches or switching to cashless. Scotia, NCB, CIBC, just some recent examples. But what does it mean for you and your money? I'm Kalila Reynolds and it's time for another episode of Money Mondays JA, brought to you by Proven Wealth. Before we get started, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel and turn on those post notifications. Also subscribe to my newsletter at kalilareynolds.com. And while you're at it, check out our other financial news on the website at kalilareynolds.com news. Well, the push towards further digitizing banks has been a long time coming. Most millennials prefer the ease of doing business online rather than taking a whole day off work to stand in line. But a number of older customers still prefer that personal interaction that they've grown up with. Today, however, with the COVID-19 pandemic, long lines and all day banking trips are no longer seen as safe especially for the elderly. So banks have pressed gas on their digital drive, forcing a switch from inline to online. Recently, Jamaica's second largest bank, Scotia Bank, announced that it's closing two branches next year, Black River in St. Elizabeth and Old Harbor in St. Catherine. They're also switching six other branches to digital only, meaning they won't be doing any cash transactions in branch. For that, you'll have to use the ATM. Now, there were a lot of negative reactions when I tweeted this breaking money news. So I invited Scotiabank's president and CEO, David Noel, on Taking Stock last week to explain. He defended the move by pointing out that people have been doing less and less in-branch transactions over the years. In fact, this September, he said, less than 6% of Scotia's total transactions were done inside its branches. Over the past few years, you've seen a steady trend of a decline in in-branch transactions and an increase in digital transactions. So many of your, your viewers and listeners, you know, watching on YouTube or going to your website, probably do most of their banking online, do most of their transfers online. They don't think of going into a bank to line up to go and pay a bill. And so we've seen those, that trend happen over the last 10 years. Just, you know, five years ago, you had over 30% of transactions happening in branch, total transactions. That has been coming down steadily, and online and mobile transactions used to be less than 10%. Online and mobile transactions crossed um, branch transactions in about 2017, so you had basically had more online transactions than branch transactions. And branch transactions, the percentage of all transactions, is now down to less than 6%. So in some of our branches, um, that we're closing, you've actually seen a 50% drop in transactions in a one-year period. But that trend had been starting for, for many years. Now, of course, some of this behavior changed by customers can be attributed to COVID-19 since there have been limits on public gatherings and nightly curfews. But Noel said that even before COVID, branch traffic had fallen by about half in some locations. And it's not just Scotia. Other institutions are also making changes to reduce in-house transactions. In September, NCB finally started allowing new customers to open savings accounts online. And starting December, customers will also be able to manage their standing instructions online. This means that you will be able to create recurring transfers or payments such as wire transfers, utility payments, and third-party transfers to other NCB account holders. And that's great because it means there's less need for you to visit physical locations during this pandemic and beyond. Other institutions like JMMB have also been expanding their online offerings. At its recent annual general meeting, JMMB Group CEO Keith Duncan said the pandemic has accelerated their digitization. Digital is going to be important in the new normal and driving that experience. You know, the upgrade to, to online banking um, has, been a, has been very successful for us at the retail and business level. ETMs converted to ATMs. Um, the, the, as we said, the core enabling technology T24, we're going to look to upgrade that in a couple of, in, 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 the, in the medium term. The Visa debit card service that were rolled out, the online APO, we're going to build out more digital channels, online onboarding, 
online onboarding. I think we roll out online chat already. Since the start of the year, JMMB has introduced new features such as online sign up for its online banking platform Moneyline. They also launched a Visa debit card, real time trading, and they're scheduled to begin rolling out intelligent ATMs by the end of the financial year. You'll be able to make deposits and pay bills at these ATMs. They're also working to make opening an account online possible. Mayberry Investments also sped up their digitization plans by upgrading their app so customers don't need to go to the office as much, especially since most of their staff are still working from home. And of course, Proven Wealth has also been at the forefront of this digital push. Even before COVID, they launched their really cool app, which allows you to access account balances, get alerts when a dividend payment hits your account. You can set watch list alerts for stocks you have your eye on and a bunch of other cool stuff. They also launched IPO Pro, a one-stop investment hub to apply for IPOs. But as I mentioned earlier, this digital transformation has been a long time coming. So the pandemic isn't the only contributing factor. It just sped things up. So those are some of the positives, but these changes also have a downside. First of all, people don't like change, especially people who've been doing things a certain way for a really long time, such as the elderly. It also means job losses. Scotia, for example, has closed 35 branches across the Caribbean. Back in May, NCB announced that it would be closing three of its locations and focusing more on facilitating transactions through intelligent ABMs and drop boxes. And just last week, CIBC First Caribbean announced that it would be closing its Twin Gates branch on Constant Spring Road in St. Andrews. So that's among them a whole lot of jobs. We also have to consider the digital divide. How many people actually have access to the internet or smart devices to conduct transactions. David Noel mentioned that Scotia's app is zero rated, meaning you don't use any data when you use the app, but you still do need to have a data plan on your phone, which to me defeats the whole purpose. Also, what about the senior citizens who may not be so tech savvy? The bank claims that many seniors have already transitioned to digital with the onset of the pandemic. But I don't know, because many of the branch cuts and cashless branches are within the farming belts of deep rural areas with spotty Wi-Fi, if it even exists, and also low levels of education. So what does this digital transformation mean for you and your money? In Jamaica, it means that transactions within the six cashless branch locations will likely be faster. That's because cash transactions still account for a good chunk of those long lines at the bank, which will need to be eliminated. Instead, customers can access cash outside at the ABMs. The bank expects that as a result, more complex transactions can be done within a given day. This is expected to be revenue neutral for the bank, meaning the earnings will balance out the losses it should also give customers more time for banking advice and financial solutions. For investors holding shares in Scotia Group Jamaica, it should result in a more efficient bank, meaning revenue should remain stable but spread across lower fixed costs like rent and utilities and lower staff costs. Unfortunately, like I mentioned before, branch closures implies job losses. Scotia's stock price dropped roughly 12% for the latest quarter, and its market value now hovers at $136 billion. Now, personally, I think this digital switch is a good thing, even with the job losses. I think where technology can be used to make systems more efficient, go for it. This frees up human brain power to do other things, for example. Have you seen the historical film Hidden Figures? It's about these three black women who were computers for NASA and helped to put astronaut John Glenn on the moon. You heard me right. Their job title was literally computer. There was a time when a computer was a person, not a thing. Their job was to compute, to do math all day. Computers as we know it are so much more efficient at that though. Can you imagine buildings full of people all over the world punching calculators all day for basic stuff? The work that computers do for us now frees up our minds and our time to do other more productive and creative things. I think the same will happen in banking. If bank workers spend less time dishing out cash, which an ATM can do, they have more time to solve customers' actual problems, which we've all complained about, having to wait forever for customer service or to get someone on the phone. 
Well, that's it for this episode of Money Mondays, JA. Let me know in the comments what you think about the digital move and closing branches. Do you think it's a good or a bad thing? Comment below. Now, here's what's coming up on Taking Stock. NCB Capital Markets Limited is set to launch a suite of alternative investment solutions through a newly formed company, Stratus Alternative Investments FSC. What's this all about? We'll find out more from Assistant Vice President, Alternatives and Funds Management at NCB Capital Markets, Simone Hudson. And later, the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. Kingston Properties is considering going to the market with an additional public offer, and Playa Hotels and Resorts NV has recorded a greater loss of $78 million when compared to the previous year of $30 million. We'll discuss. As always, thanks for watching, and here's a reminder to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and share with your friends. Also, subscribe to our newsletter at KhalilaReynolds.com for the latest business news, analysis, and the transcript of this episode. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Stay safe.